Hello once again my dear students and welcome to another video for our class in event-driven programming. In this video I will be introducing to you the very basics of Java Swing events. So Java GUI events are bundled in the java.awt.event package. This was the same uh, AWT event package that was used by the abstract windowing toolkit back then, the, ju the first uh, <clears throat> generation of graphical user interface for Java was AWT. It was a very lightweight, uh, but it is now. It was uh, since been replaced by Swing, and at this at this moment, the Swing is also uh, been replaced by Java FX. But we'll get to Java FX later. Uh, so now, even if Swing have uh, replaced AWT as the graphical user interface package it is still using the AWT event uh, when handling events because essentially Swing is just a supersede of AWT. So the way to think about events in Swing, every Swing component such as JButton, JTextField, JComboBox, JFrame, even JPanel and even JLabel, all those components are capable of firing several types of events. However, these events does not necessarily equate or execute any action. That is until you want to do something about it. And each type of event has a corresponding event listener, which if defined can perform a method when such an event is triggered. So it is the united cooperation of an event and an event listener that event handling is uh, in Java Swing. Uh, possible. So, to, to make it more graphical, a, a, any swing component is capable, again, of firing an event depending on how the user interacts with that particular component. So, when a user types on a text field, it actually uh, performs or fires an event. When the user clicks a button, or even you pu you move your mouse over a J label, it actually fires an event. However, uh, these events are not being handled, and until you handle such event, that's the time you can perform some action based on that event as a trigger. So Swing components performs or triggers an event, but even if you do trigger an event, nothing really happened, and for that matter. Uh, we have what is known as event listeners. So event listeners' job is to simply wait for uh, an event to happen. And that particular event is specific. In an event listener will only be listening to a specific event of a specific component. So when that component fires an event, that component that is being listened to by the event listener, the event listener reacts and therefore performs the method that is uh, uh, also part of the event listener, in fact, the uh, required method of an event listener, and performs that method. And that is when uh, you can perform tasks, you can perform actions or executions uh, based on an event. So now that we got that uh, all that out of the way, let us now uh, uh, see how to cr manually code a program uh, that triggers an event. So I'm going to open up a folder using Visual Studio Code where I will write our first class. Just call this class J button or button click at Java. Of course, we'll be extending this the J frame and uh, now we'll have a constructor now as a good practice uh, if we are going to access something some component that component is better declared globally so here outside of any method I will be declaring a J button just call this OK button like so
And now we'll proceed with the creation of our GUI. And we'll instantiate our button. And of course, add that button into our frame. Uh, we have to set our frame first to a different. Uh, oh, well, we'll use the default um, layout manager. So we'll just add the button at the south. And let's open up a main method. Okay. So we have now a very simple GUI with a button at the bottom. But nothing happens when you click on the bottom. Right? That's because we are not handling any event yet. To handle an event, there are plenty of ways, such as there are plenty of ways to kill a cat. So let me show you one way to do it is by uh, adding it as a an inner class. As you see, a an event listener is actually an interface such that you are going to implement an interface and uh, actually have a new class that will be doing the listening so in this case we'll simply say ok button that add action listener so we'll be using add we'll be using action listener because the event that will be triggered when you click on a button is an action event so like I said earlier partner sila uh, uh, the action event has a partner action listener in this case the event that will be triggered when you click on a button is the action event and therefore you'll be using an action listener to handle such an event so now what you should put inside of here is an an action listener which we don't have right now so what we can do is we simply create a new action listener okay however this new action listener will require a method and that method is called action perform and also we need to import this we might as well also import now the action listen uh, action event like so <clears throat> right so now the method that is required here is the action perform so it has to be public void action perform this is the method that is required which has a parameter of an action event and here is where we can put our code that will be executed when the when we click on the button so for simplicity purposes let's just display a message you click the button all right so now if we try and run this program you click on OK and you have your event performing something another way is instead of creating an inner class because he, here we are creating an inner class in fact if we are going to compile this java c button click that java it is going to create two classes you see this is the class that is to be executed as you can see it has the same name as the source code button click but besides that there's another class button class dollar one that is also created this is the inner class that we created here this one okay so we're making an inner class but another way without using an inner class in this case is by 
turning our class itself, the button click itself, as a listener. Right now, button click is a JFrame. But besides being a JFrame, we can also make this button click class as a listener by simply implementing that interface. So all we have to do is imp add here implements action listener. So what happens now is that button click is now an action listener and now there's an error because for in order to complete that uh, being a, a, an action listener, button click has to implement a method which is the required method of an action listener which if you still remembered was action perform so now all we have to do is add that method here as part of the button click public void action perform and here we put an action event as again a parameter so now that we put this method here the the error just goes away because now the conversion of this uh, button click into an action listener is complete because now we implemented that required method. Now that our button click is an action listener, we can make this button click class listen to our OK button in the same way. So now we can say OK button that add action listener and instead of creating a new listener from here, we can just use button click as our action listener and to uh, and to address, uh, to refer, to refer to our button click, we use the keyword this. This simply means this class. And this class is an action listener. So when we say add action listener this, we are making this class listen to this button. So now we can put our code here of whatever we want to do when the button is clicked. And we will be having the same result. See, but now instead of having two classes when we when we compile this, we'll only have one. We no longer have an inner class. All right. Now let's take a look at an example for a more realistic situation wherein most of the time in a single frame there will be multiple possible events that might happen there. So in this example we'll be having two buttons and we'll trigger uh, two different events and perform two different tasks depending on which button has been clicked. So I've gone ahead and typed the code to generate the UI. Let me just explain to you how this is done. So we have the same uh, initial sizing and titles of the frame. Then we defined our two buttons and a message box on actually a, a label and instantiated it here. We created a label and initialized an initial text. And we also set our label to have an horizontal alignment to be centered. And then we added the message at the center of our frame then we created a panel which has a layout of one row two columns that is where we put our buttons into the, the panel and the panel is being added into the frame at the south side of the frame and so this is how the frame would look like All right so when we click on ok button it should be displaying here a random number and when we click on cancel it is just it will just simply exit out of this frame so to do this now, again, two ways I'm going to show you. Of course, there are more than two ways to do this, but let me just show you two common ways. The first thing is using the, again, using again the uh, inner classes. So here we are going to add an event listener for OK button first. So we say OK button that add action listener. And here we create a new action listener and add here public void action perform method with an action event as a parameter and here we're going to do something which is we'll simply generate a 
number and display it on screen. Now, we want this uh, this particular action here actually go is going to access something which is this a particular J label. And since we have to remember this particular block here is an inner class, this is another class. So since this is another class, it is not able to access this message J label because this J label do not have an access modifier. It's not public. So in order for us to be able to do something that that actually have access to this J label, we'll simply create a method and call that method right here. So we'll just on OK click and we pass in that event action event. So of course we don't have this yet. Let's create that. Public void. Oh, actually we can just just use private void on OK click and we pass in an action event like so see and now we can perform the action here and this particular method has access to this J label so now let's do a random number It's just a random number from 0 to 100. And let's display that by changing the property of the message J label. So message dot set text. All right? And the text would be random number generated. And we add there the random number. All right. So when we run this program and we click on OK, you see that we have generated a random number. Now let's do that. The cancel should close the button. So now here, we can add cancel button dot add action listener. And here we'll have new listener and public void action performed and here we're simply going to act to close this program so simply call system dot exit and that would be it so Let's try. Click on OK. We generate 51. We click on Cancel. We close out of our program. So that's how you can do perform auto multiple uh, buttons. Now, to the other way of doing this, which is by implementing an action listener. So let me remove these pieces of code. Actually, let's just leave it there. We'll, we'll copy some of the code there. So now, again, we do implements. Action listener. And of course, we'll have an error because we have to implement a method, public avoid action performed and we pass in an action event right okay however remember we are going to add this to our ok button say this and also for our cancel button All 
Yan ang add action event mo na. Okay. So now, our action event, our action listener, sorry, is now listening to two components. So how does it knows which button was clicked? So if we click on the OK button, we are calling the same method, this method. But when we click on cancel button, we're also calling the same method. Okay? So that is where this works. That is the role of this object event. Inside of this action event has information of what or which component is triggering that particular event. So now we can just do a branching statement. Alright? So to do that, you simply say if and then the EV, which is the object of the action event that was triggered, has information. When you click on EV dot get source, it returns an object and that object is actually uh, the actual component that was uh, triggering the event. So let me put this out and put this on a J button object source button is equal to we simply parse it actually not parse we typecast it into a J button because remember it is an object so this particular object is typecasted into a button we simply get a reference to whatever button we have clicked so now we can now say if ok button is equal to source button now if we click the ok button source button will be equal to the so ok uh, ok button so now we can perform this code right here and we can remove this method else if uh, it is the cancel button that is equal to the source button we can simply say system dot exit and perhaps you can also put some message goodbye right so one listener listening to two buttons or two sources you can do a branching statement by identifying which uh, component triggered the event so running this program again let's see how it works you click on ok it generates a number and we click on cancel it closes out okay so now let's take a look at how we can handle events from the other components namely a text field combo box list box and label so here I have a initial code and as a result, don't worry, I will be sharing this code to, uh, in our Moodle course. So if we run this program, we have this UI. At the first, this is a J list. So this is a J list. Next is a text field where you can type text. This is a combo box. And here is a label. And we'll try to trigger events and handle these events here one by one. We'll start with the text field. Because text field and J combo, uh, combo box, they also use the same event and event listener pair, which is the action event. Okay, so we have here declared a text field and a combo box. So let's start with the text field. All we have to do is say text field dot add action listener just like in a button exactly the same as uh, handling event from the button so here we'll simply display a message but what we need to do is of course get uh, reference to the source of the event so it's a text field and we have to typecast it because the following code which is if that 
get source returns an object and so it has to be uh, typecasted back to a text field and from there we can get the text value so you can now just display you typed tf dot get text oops all right let's try this okay if I type here something and enter so it says you typed something type another thing and enter you type another thing all right so now let's take a look at how we do this with combo box like I said it's just the same so uh, let's do combo box because that's the name of our object dot add action listener new action listener and public void action performed and again we get the source this time this is a combo box ev that get source once we get the source we can get the selected item as a string so cb dot get selected item now this get selected item returns an object that is why we have to type cast it back to string and it is safe because when we declared our combo box see a we are type we are parameterizing type as string so that we are saying that the content of the combo box are strings okay now that we have the selected item we can now use it I'll just display it again you selected and then the selected item Okay, let's try running this program now if I click on infrastructure you selected infrastructure select livelihood you selected livelihood or education you selected education and the text field still works see you type text field all right now let's uh, try to uh, handle the event coming from a J label okay now in the case of a J label there's really not much uh, we can do with events however we can use uh, events which can be common to all of the components which means that the the next uh, event handling we're going to we're going to perform for our J label can actually be performed as well on text fields, combo box, list box, and I any other uh, component for that matter. We'll be using mouse listener. So here we're gonna do label that add mouse listener. And here let's import first our mouse listener and mouse event. right new mouse listener however if we are going to use mouse listener there are a lot of required methods for mouse listener because there are plenty of things that a mouse can do if you hover up on that particular statement you are going to see here the suggested or the required methods that a mouse listener needs and that would be the mouse clicked the mouse exited the and many others so you have mouse entered mouse pressed mouse clicked mouse released and mouse exited these are all the required methods so if we are going to use mouse listener here we have to put all those methods or implement all those methods here however to there's also a way to shorten up 
our code. We, if we want only, for example, just the click of the mouse, the mouse click only, then we'll not use the mouse listener. Instead, we can use the mouse adapter. So let me change our uh, import here to mouse adapter. So now here, we'll use mouse adapter. And now we'll only be implementing one or two or whatever we want to implement. So in this case, we'll only be implementing the mouse click. So public void mouse click and put here a mouse event like so. So the same thing with the rest. We simply get the a reference to the source. So jlabel lb is equal to jlabel to be to be uh, typecasted ev that get source and now we'll have access to the source and we'll we'll just change the label to something else so lb that set text you just click me all right <coughs> So if we run this program, now when we click on the label, you just click me. Now let's move on to the last one, the J, the J list. This is a little bit different because the event that is going to happen here is actually not in the AWT anymore. It is a newer type of event. That's why it, it, it is uh, residing at the swing package. So let's take a look at this. For our list, is, there, is it list? Uh, list box, right? List box, we can actually add, uh, selected item. I forgot the name of that thing. Other add list selection listener okay so we're going to use the list selection listener and this list selection listener is actually residing in the swing package we'll have a new list selection listener okay and we need to import this and of course this is now found in the swing package See, Java X swing event list selection listener. And let's also import the partner list selection event. That's the partner for this. So going down here, we are going to implement a method, and that is the uh, what made value change see that so say public void value change and we pass in a list selection event like so and just like the others uh, why anyway I think uh, it's just a problem with the VS Code. So now, this is like the others. We'll have a reference to the to the list. So we'll have a J list. JL is equal to EV that get source. And now we can get the selected item here. JL dot uh, get selected value. This will return an object. So we have to typecast it to a string. Selected item is equal to and typecast it into a string. And now we can display our output. You selected selected item. All right. So let's run this program again. And when you click on Dumaguete, oops, we do have a problem. 
It's an exception. This is going to be overwhelming to look at. <clears throat> yeah. Value change list select. Nice. I see. It's selection event. And that is why. <laughs> Case run and click on Mandawe. Oops. So you have you selected Mandawe. By the way, it's always going to be twice when you click on the mouse because when you click when you press the mouse, boom. See? It triggers the event and when you release the mouse, boom, it also triggers the event. <laughs> but if you are going to use your keyboard, the arrow key you go up, you see it triggers one event only. You go up again for Dumaguete and then Mandawe and Cebu and Bohol and so on. But if you do use the mouse, it's going to be twice like that. Okay, so that is all for our lesson in basics of uh, event handling for swing uh, components. I hope that you have learned uh, everything that you need to learn from this uh, session. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next one.